Let's take a look at the concept of an optimum currency area. Now what this is, is it's a geographic area where a single currency would offer the greatest economic benefit. And it was first proposed by the research of economist Robert Mundell, won the Nobel Prize in economics in 1999. What it does is it allows for closer integration of capital markets and facilitates trade. Um, the problem is, is that a common currency results in a loss of each country's ability to use monetary and fiscal policy to stabilize their economy. Um, also, if there are asymmetric shocks, um, then that may undermine the benefit of the optimum currency area. For example, recession in one country, but not in the others. So, Mundell proposed four criteria for an optimum currency area high labor mobility throughout the area, that is, people can move from one country to the other to work, capital mobility and price and wage flexibility, a currency risk sharing or fiscal mechanism to share risk across countries in the optimum currency area, that is, an ability to transfer money to regions experiencing economic difficulties from countries with surpluses and similar business cycles. So a good way to look at this is, let's take the United States. Here it is one country, but there are 50 states. But one currency works because it meets the criteria for an optimum currency area. Capital and labor are mobile. Workers oftentimes move from one state to another to find a job. People will move all the way across the country. If the economy is poor in the uh, Northeast, people may move to the Southeast to find jobs or to the West. Um, similar business cycles among the states. There are times when one region of the country is suffering economically while others are doing better, but generally speaking, um, the business cycles in the different states are quite similar. Um, you have a common language and the cultures are similar, okay? Not identical in different regions of the country. You have somewhat different cultures, but for the most part, cultures are similar. And money also is able to get transferred to states that are having economic difficulty. For example, federal taxes paid by states that are having economic difficulty may fall, but transfers to the people of the state like Social Security and Medicare continue, which is essentially transferring more money to them, or more net money to them. Let's take Europe. Now Europe doesn't really meet the conditions for an optimum currency area. Capital and labor are not as mobile. So even if there are no barriers to working in another country, different languages and cultures may make workers hesitant to move. Countries don't have similar business cycles. In the not too distant past, Ireland, Greece, Spain, and Italy went through economic slumps or severe recessions while the German economy was doing fine. Each country though was unable to pursue its own fiscal and monetary policy to try and alleviate the uh, slump. And Germans were unwilling to share the pain, which is certainly not surprising. Um, if these countries were not tied to the euro, they could have pursued policies like devaluing their currency or using expansionary monetary or fiscal policy. And one example is Iceland. Iceland went through a severe banking crisis, but they had their own currency. They did not join the euro. And they were able to devalue their currency and work their way out of the crisis. What devaluing the currency does is it's similar to cutting wages in the country. It's very hard to get people to have their wages cut unless they know prices are going to go down. And you're not going to allow that to happen, so which one happens first? Um, also, when a country devalues, the country's exports become less expensive to foreigners and imports become more expensive. So again, people in the country spend less buying goods from other countries and foreigners buy more of the um, country's goods which hopefully helps to lift them out of the recession. Economist Paul Krugman, who won the Nobel Prize in Economics in 2008, is a longtime critic of the euro. 
And if you're interested in learning more about this, he had a very good piece in the New York Times Magazine on January 12th, 2011, titled, Can Europe Be Saved?, where he discusses the issue. He also talks about how the euro came about. Very, very interesting article.